mate. Three steps to business marketing success. Now, I imagine there could be 103 steps, and I'm sure that Ray's going to talk about the three he, that he has found have been the most effective ways to impact your business and therefore marketing success. The words I picked out of his blurb that he gave us a few weeks ago, discover what you need to do and where you need to invest. So I imagine there's a thousand things that could be done, but where's that the payback, yes. where am I going to invest? Is that the, is that That's the pretty focus? much it, yep. And uh, so thanks for that, Lee. Welcome, I think, mate. Um, yeah, I guess it's a... Uh, marketing, I guess, is an area of, um, as Lee said, there's probably hundreds of areas that you can invest in, and uh, I'll just cover a couple off today. But basically, I think one of the things when, when we... Well, one of the questions I have with, with most businesses is what holds most businesses back? And invariably, when you, when you actually analyse it, as businesses grow, you get so encapsulated in your own work and what you're doing and providing your product and your service to market that you actually forget about your marketing and sales. And so that tends to fall behind, behind the eight ball right from the start. So you get busy with all the work, but you actually forget to put the marketing in place. Or if you had marketing in place, you forget all about it until six months later when the work dries up and then you haven't got to work again. So it's a really common thing, and I think that's what holds a lot of businesses back, particularly smaller businesses where they're one or two man shows, husbands and wives or whatever, and they're just still trying to get traction. So I tried to break it down when I look at what businesses do that we work with and the mistakes that I see getting made. You can break marketing really into three simple areas. Develop a strategy, implement that strategy, and then measure and optimise. And invariably, I'm not going to talk too much today about the implementation side of things here, because you can all go and implement and do your own AdWords and Facebook and everything if you want to do that, um, or you can employ somebody like ourselves. But I, I think what I see a lot of the time is development of the strategy falls behind, and certainly if they do have a strategy, number three, the measure and optimisation invariably doesn't even happen, even with bigger businesses. So that's what I wanted to cover off if I can today and hopefully give you a few pointers. So from a strategy point of view, I guess a couple of the main considerations are traditional offline marketing, online marketing, or is it a combination of both that's going to suit your business? Um, invariably, I'm going to push online because we're more an online marketing agency, but I, would, I wouldn't say just cancel offline um, because depending on your business, there may well be people there that you can reach in the offline market, so it might be a combination of both that you need to do. I guess my slant from an offline marketing point of view, if you look at some of those mediums such as sort of television, radio, local paper, printed magazines, whatever it might be, signage even on vehicles, they might be great for building your brand, but they're not necessarily as targeted as what they could be. So there's a little bit of focus lost um, on reaching the actual target market. If you compare that to what you can do online, where you're developing your own website, Hopefully you've got a, depending on what your structure is or your strategy is, you can collect names off that website. Um, and in that case, what you're really actually doing is building an asset. Your website is your asset. That database of names that you're collecting is your asset. Then we get into the implementation side of things with either SEO, Google AdWords, Facebook ads, whatever it actually may be that's part of your strategy. Online, this is highly, highly targeted. It's not like a billboard on the side of the freeway where 100,000 cars going down and there's only two or three people interested in what's on the billboard. People are actually typing into Google what they want. They're telling you what they want. So from a marketing perspective, we just can tailor a solution. And that's, that's really the job of your business in that sense. And then social media comes in and, and email marketing and those sorts of things where you can really engage your audience and build trust and authority with your client base. So basically, how does it work? If you have your structure in place and you can get yourself a website that's nicely optimised, the first thing from that perspective on is that you need to set goals and objectives in what you're trying to achieve with your website. One of the fundamental things I always say to a client when we're talking about a website, right from the start, what do you want people to do when they hit your website? What are they supposed to do? Are they supposed to telephone you? Is that your main call to action? Or do you want them to fill out the inquiry form? Do you want them to sign up for your newsletter? What is it? So you need to be really clear. And it might be a couple of things. But set goals and objectives around what you want to achieve from that website. Then drive traffic, which is the implementation. And then the third one is the test and measure, which I'll cover off a bit more. I'm going to race through this first little section and then I'm going to get to the measurement part of it because I think that's a real letdown for a lot of businesses. 
And once you do test and measure and you work out what's working and what's not working, we rinse and repeat, go back to the start, go through it all again. So over a, over a prolonged period of time, what actually ends up happening is you're always streamlining, streamlining and optimising your marketing efforts and hopefully reducing costs. Getting to a point at the end of the day where there's really not a lot of wastage. Early times there will be because you don't know what works yet. But if you test and measure and optimise and continually do that, rinse and repeat, you will eventually get a really high level campaign going that you know when you do certain things, it's going to generate business for you. Also on the strategy part of it, this is just one quick thing, if this is the only thing that you take out of the day, note it down. Um, what I see a lot of people doing, if I've got this little house in the middle here, and I'm calling that your website because that's your asset. All right, That's your main thing on the web, that's your website, you own it. Never forget that you own your website. All the other platforms around the outside, whether it be Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Pinterest, whatever it is that is where your target market is, sure use them, use them as a platform, but understand they are under your platform and you should be driving traffic back to your money pages on your website. Because if you build a business, and I've seen people do this, build a business on Facebook, what if Facebook decides to close down tomorrow morning? Your business closes down. Um, that might seem far-fetched, but there's some pretty big websites on Impostorous, which uh, might, some may, may not have heard about, just closed down a couple of weeks ago. So you never say never. So here's one quick little strategy that um, is a pretty common one that I see. Um, website in the middle there. You might blog. You might post your blog onto Facebook with a link. You might have a YouTube video also heading to Facebook and also then auto-feeding out through Twitter. Pretty standard type thing that I see happening. Most people that don't have a great strategy start off with something along those lines. But what they actually forget is the next stage where they should be driving traffic back to the website because that's where your money is. That's where you want to build your database. Okay? So generate the activity over here on the platforms, use them and leverage them, but get your people back here, and that's where your high-quality content is on your website. Make sense? And then the next stage is obviously you can then drive traffic on through SEO, AdWords, or whatever that strategy is from the other direction back to your website. So that's what I wanted to cover off on the strategy side of things. Um, and we probably raced through that a bit because I wanted to get to, um, to this stuff on measurement. Um, are there any sort of questions on that or is anyone in a bit of doubt on what I've covered off there? Or, yeah? If you were to choose just one social media platform, yep. what would you recommend? Uh, depends on your business. <laughs> what is your business? Well, I can say, I can say yes, Facebook, because everyone's on Facebook. Yeah. But if you're a professional organisation, if you're a debt collector... Financial services. Well, there's... LinkedIn could be more beneficial, don't know, we'd have to talk further, but we had a debt collection agency um, come to us, or debt consolidation business they were, had all of this stuff going and said, right, we want to build a Facebook page now. Fantastic. How many people do you think are going to go onto your Facebook page and tell the world that they've got debt problems? <laughs> Everything's relevant, so yeah, it's got to be the strategy behind it, which is, what I'm, which is the point, I guess. Um, so with measurement, uh, moving into this, because this is the bit that I really want to cover, and, and even bigger businesses don't do this well enough. Um, identify your objectives and goals. As a business owner, which I'm assuming a lot of you are, um, you need to know what triggers provide profit. That's your job. Then make sure you've got the goals in place and the measurements in place. So don't accept, if you're using a third, third, third party company to do SEO or AdWords or whatever it might be, don't just accept the automated report that they're giving you. Okay? Because they're going to just give out what they believe you want. Tell them what you want and the measures that you want, alright? Because there's tools available and everything can be tracked and measured. So there's no reason why they shouldn't be able to provide the result. I'll come back and show you something a bit later on on what we can um, put together on that. One of the main things, hopefully if everybody's got their own website, um, you should have access to your own Google Analytics account. Um, I'm assuming most people know what Google Analytics is, do you? So most people would look in their account and look at this sort of thing here and say, oh yeah, I've had 250 hits today or I've had two or whatever. Um, hits don't really mean much because you can get all the traffic in the world that you like, but what do they do when they get there? 
Alright, if they're not converting, that's what you need to know. It's no use looking at the stats saying, fantastic, I've gone from 100 this month to 1,000, but guess what? I haven't sold anymore. Something's going wrong. So you can actually set goals in analytics. If you've got an e-commerce store, you can track your conversions. You can even link AdWords campaigns in. You can identify the keywords that people are typing into Google that actually trigger sales for you and conversions. And there's really no reason, Google Analytics is free, so there's really no reason why you shouldn't have these types of things set up even at a very basic level. And this sort of stuff here might take you a little bit to get your head around, but it can be done on your own. It will just take your time. Okay, but Google Analytics, powerful, powerful tool, and for free, why wouldn't you have it? And why wouldn't you know what's going on? One of the other things we use, and we're getting a little bit deeper now, is we can put a heat map on your website. So what we actually do, it's, it makes no difference to the end user. Um, on the web, they can type in, they'll find your website, not a problem, they'll see no difference whatsoever. But on the back end, what we've done is almost, I guess you can explain it like an invisible film over the page. And we can actually see here where people are clicking. So in, in this instance here, this is an FAQ page that we developed for a client. And we've listed, I think, I don't know how many questions, 10 or 12, 15 maybe, questions along here, all just as one row of text, with the idea being that we thought they were the questions that people would want to know. They could click the question, it would open up, and they'd get the answer. So really good from a user perspective. And we wanted to find out whether we had the right questions or whether they'll click on where we wanted them to. In this case, fantastic example, because they're obviously this is where all the heat is and this is where the clicks are, and they're pretty even through all of those um, questions that we had there. So we reckon we were pretty much on the money with that. If we had seen a lot of activity up here where they were flipping off the page and not much here, We'd be saying, well, something's going on here. We better, we better change this page. Um, now you don't know that sort of stuff unless you put this, this stuff in place. So heat maps are pretty low cost and pretty easy to implement as well if you wanted to do it yourself. There's probably quite a few tools out there that you can get hold of. Um, so yeah, you really want to know what what a customer's doing or prospects doing when they're hitting your website. Here's another type of test that can be done. You may have heard of split testing, A/B testing. Anybody got involved in that at all? Very simply, what we can do, um, well, this example here, um, this client actually wanted to have people join up off their website to partner with them as a reseller. So we set up a very basic page, put the text on, put a button there and said join up. We then created another page with exactly the same text on it, but we changed the button and we put a guy there who was very accommodating, putting his hand out saying, come and join us. Now, common sense just told me right from the start, this was going to be an absolute winner. So we had two web pages, exactly the same, except for this thing here. Okay? We get a 1,000 people come to the website, 500 see this one, 500 see this one. We work out, of these 500, we had 100 conversions. Of these 500, we had 10. This is the winning page. That's the page we run with. Now, opinions are fantastic and mine's nearly always right, but this bloke here, absolute failure. A couple of clicks, but look at this one over here. People prefer, for whatever reason, don't ask me why, but the data tells us they prefer this page. Very simple split test that you can set up through Google Analytics once again um, that actually gives you results to then go away. Now, in this case here, I wouldn't have said this was a complete dead loss. Because the next stage might be that we do another split test, use this page, and maybe we use a female there and see how we go. Then we might get another winner, then we might change the colour of the button and test the pink against the green. So it's just a continual evolution all the time of trying to get better and better and better. You can put a scroll map on, but then this is particularly handy if you've got a very long page, it's a long sales page on your website, you might have stuff in the middle of that page that you think is highly relevant testimonials or whatever. I had a sales page up with a couple of testimonials in the middle of it. Um, I put a heat map on and this shows that there's high level of activity here. People are stopping here and actually reading this information. As we get into the red and then the green and the blue and then it goes into black, um, not a lot of interest in these areas. So if you start getting green, blue and black in the middle of a page that people are scrolling down, there's a reason for that. Change the text, change something, put a video there to make it more interesting. Because regardless of how interesting you think it is, the, the people going there are uninterested for whatever reason. So once again, we're backing up opinions with data. 
And here's a big one, and I'm assuming most involved here probably are looking in their business off their website for telephone calls. Would that be right? What sort of ratio would we have? Telephone calls are a main call. Um, you can actually have telephone tracking now. And that will also link you with your Google Analytics. So if you run an AdWords campaign and you're spending $1,000 a month on AdWords and your main call to action is a telephone call, you need to understand how many telephone calls you're getting and whether they're converting. If you're not getting any, then maybe we shouldn't be doing AdWords. All right? But the telephone tracking can work where it can even go to a keyword level where you know exactly what keyword they typed in that triggered that telephone call. But at a very basic level, even if all you did was run it, as what came from AdWords, what came from SEO, what came from social media, and what came from my thousand dollar flyers that I sent out last month. Yeah. How can you tell that a phone call has been generated from your website when there's no you know, yeah. physical connection? You need a code on your website. Okay, so if somebody hits your website, there's a secret code in behind in the back end, which maybe you wouldn't be able to set up, but a telephone company could or a web developer and that will trigger so that when the telephone number gets phoned you can have a rotating number even on your website and you wouldn't even notice changes no different to the end consumer but they get a different everybody can get a different telephone number redirects to your main number get answered by you or your receptionist but we know where it's come from because of the telephone number and the ip track okay so i can explain all that upstairs anyway if you want to have a chat with us but um very very simple once it's set up but a lot of people aren't doing it, and, and I don't really know why. And the really good thing is that if you've got people answering your telephone, it'll give you data like um, peak, peak periods in the day, peak days in the week, and these little brown things down here are unanswered calls. So if you're getting a lot of brown, for whatever reason, you better find out why the girl isn't answering the phone. And she's either not there, or she's too busy and you better get somebody else. So there's, there's heaps of data that gives you great information to make better decisions in your overall marketing. Quickly getting towards the end here, um, business intelligence dashboards. This is um, going to become more and more so, and I reckon in two or three years' time, pretty much every business will be using these. Instead of getting those automated printed out reports that are 45 pages long in PDF format that the SEO blokes just hit the button at the end of the month and email it to you because you can, you can actually get live data feeds on stuff that means something to you. So whether it's SEO, whether it's AdWords, whether it's your leads per month, whether it's uh, sales, turnover, whatever it is, you can have all of these little widgets that you can just log in and see exactly what's happening almost in real time. That's far better than a monthly report at the end of the month that's just automated that nobody really reads or doesn't know what the hell it all means. Have I lost everybody yet? <laughs> Makes sense. About a minute to go over? You've got, uh, you've got uh, 60 seconds. Good. Fantastic. <laughs> I'm ahead of time. That's about a minute. Good. So I go back right to the first slide. As most businesses grow, they spend too much time focusing on their service and their product and not enough on their marketing efforts and their sales become undermined. And they don't even know it's happening. And I've been in that situation myself and I can really assimilate to that because you do. You spend all your time and you're busy but you forgot about the marketing side of things. So, um, and most of what I've gone through there today, you can do yourself a little bit of research. If you want to get uh, hold of some of those tools, I'll be upstairs, you can come and see me and I'll give you the info. Or you can come and have more of a word and we can do a whole lot for you if you really want. So um, anything at all. So, uh, But yeah, all of that stuff, a lot of those tools are free or very low cost and with a little bit of effort you can implement yourself and over a longer, longer period of time you really streamline your campaigns which is why we believe it's better to be online because everything can be measured and it's a lot more targeted than what it is online. So if you enjoyed that, like me, fbswoop.com. Thank you.